Our eyes are constantly bombarded with information influencing what we do and how we relate to each other. Graphic communication is uniquely human. It's at the very heart of our modern digital age, yet it may have been part of our lives since the Ice Age. It really comes from those ancestors of ours coming up with this crazy idea of actually making these durable marks. Did cavemen use signs to communicate? Oh wow, well, that's gorgeous. A Canadian anthropologist is hunting deep underground for mysterious marks left tens of thousands of years ago. Perfect. Her journey to unlock secrets of our past may help reshape our understanding of the human mind's evolution. So the cave artists depicted a wide variety of animals. About a decade ago, Genevieve von Petzinger was following a class on rock art at the University of Victoria. Professor April Knoll showcased the extraordinary paintings of animals drawn some 30,000 years ago in French caves like Lascaux and Chauvet. But something intriguing caught Genevieve's attention. The photos are always centered on the animals, uh, but there was just these funny little abstract geometric shapes. And as I'm sitting in the class week after week, I was like, you know, I'm pretty sure I recognize that shape from like a week ago and that was from a different site. So here, for instance, we have things that look like feathered darts. We all if you look at any uh, art history textbook, you history never really video, see video. the signs that are around and the animals because they're not as spectacular. And, um, and I think also because they're enigmatic, you know, you don't really know what they are. And I remember saying, I think someone needs to study these systematically. That suggestion didn't fall on deaf ears. Genevieve's mind was riveted by the markings. She spent months combing through the inventories of over 170 French archaeological sites. She created a database to record all the signs previously reported. Circles, cross hatches, hands, spirals, crosses. Over millennia, some new signs appeared and spread across Western Europe, while others disappeared. During a 30,000 year period, our ancestors used only about 30 different types of signs. Obviously, we don't have anybody we can ask as to what the signs mean. So, what I had to do was look for patterns of use, and what I mean by that is looking for the same signs repeating at multiple sites, and that if I could find these same signs repeating at multiple sites, then it suggested that they were choosing what shapes to put there. Many of the published cave surveys had vague or incomplete data about the signs. Genevieve needed to conduct her own research in the field. Over the last two summers, the Canadian anthropologist traveled to Europe with Dylan, her husband, a professional photographer who documented their trip. Yeah, it's really pretty out here too though, hey, with the beautiful hillside. They hiked along paths leading to open air archeological sites, but the best preserved signs hide below ground in caves often difficult to access. They explored over 50 sites in Sicily, Portugal, Spain, and France. We caught up with them in the south of France, close to the Spanish border. During the Ice Age, these bucolic hills were in a much harsher environment. Early humans could seek refuge in the prehistoric caves of Istaritz and Osho Selhaya, two caves stacked one over the other. Osho Selhaya is the very, very busy cave. Okay. Including with your very typical number 17 which is a isolated sign. So, without any further description, so I guess we'll see what it is. Voilà, donc on va rentrer dans la grotte de Sturitz. In the heart of the Istaritz cave is a massive cathedral-like hall. Humans gathered around a pillar covered with carvings representing animals. They communicated using language and even music, says prehistorian Aude Labarge. 
We found here the most important set of prehistoric flutes in the world, 23 of them. Early humans were already seeking melody and musical harmony 31,000 years ago. They were paying attention to aesthetics, making anatomically inspired drawings of animals. These were very accomplished humans. There's something that looks to be right in there. Um, there's supposed to be just one of them or two of them? There's supposed to be three of them. Three of them. Yeah. But did cavemen also use signs to communicate? Genevieve and Dylan are trying to spot a set of three parallel lines in the middle of the pillar. Oh, I see them. Oh, okay. Don't move. I think that's them. <laughs> you just see the position I'm in. I'm just trying not to look down. <laughs> It's now time for us to crawl through a section that's close to the public. This low ceiling area was once a burial ground. See, Don, if you look right there, you can actually see. Yeah. The narrow passageway leads to a small chamber with strange marks. Oh, wow. You can see them very, very clearly. See, look without much light. Look how gorgeous they are. Oh, right there. Three red lines were clearly traced on the wall. You often see sets of lines in the vicinity of animals. Um, you do also find them by themselves. I mean, we don't really know what they were for, but the most common thought is that they might have been some form of tally system, so some way of counting something. Perfect. Do you got it? Wonderful. The Osho Selhaya cave located below is even more spectacular, a maze of breathtaking rock formations and mysterious chambers. It almost looks like some sort of temple out of like Indiana Jones or something. It's amazing, eh? No natural light penetrates here, yet early humans used this space and left remarkable traces like this horse. Drawings similar to those found here were identified in other French and Spanish caves. There is an exchange of information. They could even exchange images without physically going to another territory. So they had a language precise enough to do that. It will be interesting to see if the signs reach the same territories where art spread. Do you see the cross right there, Donald? Right on the wall, there's a very small red sign, partly covered by calcite. Enough of the cross is peeking through to actually be able to identify that there are two lines that cross each other here. There is less than 40 sites that I know of in the whole of Western Europe that actually have crosses in them. I'm just curious to see what, if the camera can kind of pop that better too. Oh yeah. It's totally different because you can see it so much more clearly already in the photograph. Yeah, and that could be enhanced. Well, hugely. So that then we'll actually be able to really clearly see exactly mm -hmm. what it looks like. Ooh, this is fun. So so right about I don't remember which one's the best one. But okay. After a full day of sign hunting, Genevieve and Dylan review their catch. They realize that the same kind of cross they just saw in Osho Selhaya has been found in the famous cave of Lascaux, 400 kilometers away. There, right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's from Lascaux. You see how, again, it's a totally segmented cross. Mm -hmm. Just like art, signs seem to travel over great distances and time. That idea of communicating at a distance, that idea of not having to physically be present anymore in order to impart information to other people is actually a really important developmental stage in what's led to all these things like writing systems and everything even as fancy nowadays as, you know, like tweeting and, you know, using email and all these other things comes from that idea of being able to communicate at a distance. The Canadian couple continues its journey to Spain. They explore a series of caves that hold even more intriguing signs. Could we crack the code one day? There's no prehistoric Rosetta Stone to help experts decipher them, but researchers will be looking for reoccurring groupings of signs. In all likelihood, I won't be able to tell you, you know, that it says, you know, Grog was here or something like that eventually. Um, but if I'm able to see sequences of signs in particular repeating at multiple sites, especially across very long distances, then at that point, I mean, they are communicating.
La Pasiega cave in northern Spain is a special place with unique markings, like this row of strange signs on a red line. You know, these aren't really letters, but one of them sort of looks like a Greek letter, that's why I think of it that way, and they're in this big long row. So, I mean, something's going on. It's certainly not writing yet at this point, but writing didn't come out of a vacuum. So I would say it certainly does seem like this is those very first glimmers of graphic communication. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Back in Victoria, the pictures are processed using specialized software to reveal some features that may be invisible to the naked eye. Here are the three lines from the Isteritz cave. So are you ready? You see suddenly three lines. There's definitely a fourth. And you can actually see what looks like the traces of a fifth. And so suddenly what was three lines appears to be more like at least four, if not five. five. Yeah. Wow. There are thousands of pictures left to process and many months of analysis, but Genevieve's early findings are astonishing. 65% of the signs were used at the very beginning of the human presence in Europe, which suggests they may be even more ancient. So things like lines and ovals, rectangles, circles, they're already in use. And they're not just in use, but they're already being used in, in, in what's looking like sort of a systematic, very intentional way. And so when I see that, it doesn't look like a beginning. It looks like something that's already in practice. And that's why my mind turns back towards Africa. For a long time, the main theory of human evolution asserted that after leaving Africa, our ancestors migrated to Asia and Europe, where they suddenly became very creative some 40,000 years ago. But new discoveries suggest the origins of this creative explosion may go back further. Art and science, as old as the European ones, have been found on the other side of the planet in Indonesia. And graphic patterns were found in South Africa, some of which are almost 100,000 years old. Certainly we know that people in Africa were symbol users. They, they, they had modern anatomy like us. We suspect that they had language and so on. So it's quite possible that the people moving into Europe were already bringing this repertoire of symbols with them. By 100,000 years ago, they're, they're really behaving like us. It's our story. This is our, this is our story as human beings of how did we become us? and when did we become us? And I get really excited about reaching into this deep past and yet being able to sort of pull out something that's so recognizably us. Even though the meaning of these signs is still shrouded in mystery, their appearance so far back in time suggests abstract thinking emerged near the dawn of humanity. And though thousands of years stand between us, cavemen were much closer to us than we ever thought. For The National, I'm Frédéric Zalak in Victoria.